And what equipartition tells you, it tells you how to calculate the thermal energy. Because when you add energy to something and it's as long as the number of bonds isn't changing, so as long as you're only changing the temperature, then the energy that you add goes into equally into all the modes. And we can go right back to the beginning of the quarter. How do you change the energy of something? Well, you transfer energy. So Q and W, heat and work, are energy transfers. Heat's an energy transfer from something hot to something cold. From something at a high temperature to something at a low temperature. And work is every other energy transfer. Everything that isn't heat, turns out. What if we're only talking about internal energy? So often that's what we're doing. Just talking about internal energy changes. Just care about what happens to the atoms inside here and, and we don't quite care whether this is flying through the air or not. So we don't care about mechanical energies of the whole thing but just internal energies. Then delta E total is the change in E total is just the changes in the internal energies. The internal energies, same thing. They only change if you've transferred energy. Q plus W. Again, often, we're, we would talk about things where the bond energy doesn't change. If we're talking about changes in thermal energy and we want to change the temperature, then we're probably not worried about, we're probably staying away from phase changes and we're staying away from chemical reactions and those are the places that bond energy changes around. So if we stay away from those things and there's no bond energy changes then that term is zero and all I can, then, then I can finally say the change in the thermal energy which of course indicated by a change in temperature is just due to two energy transfers. If the thermal energy goes up then Q plus W is positive. If the thermal energy goes down, then Q plus W is negative. Real, real simple. If thermal energy goes up, it's because I transferred more energy in than I took out, so that I, I end up with a net energy transfer in. And today we're going to talk about the results of that, or at least well, I mean, you've, we've already talked a little bit about the results of that, I guess. Um, we're going to talk about heat capacity. Just, just basic definition sitting right here. Heat capacity, what does that mean? Well, capacity sounds like how much will it take? And so heat capacity, well, okay, how, what could that possibly mean? Um, how much heat I can put into it? Well, I can put anything I want into it. <laughs> I mean, there is no heat capacity in the sense of just how much heat it'll hold. I can keep putting energy into something and it will change its temperature and it'll change phase and it'll turn into a gas and it'll be decimated into protons and neutrons and electrons and, and I can still keep adding energy. So there isn't a total amount of heat you can add. But there is a meaning to heat capacity. How much heat can I add to change the temperature by just one degree? If you take heat and divide by the temperature change, you've you're making a measure of how much heat it takes to change the temperature by one degree. Total heat divided by a one degree temperature change, that's what heat capacity is. How much heat divided by, how much heat per Kelvin? That doesn't mean you change the temperature by one degree. If you put twice as much heat in and change it by two degrees, the ratio would still be the same. Yeah? Doesn't the math matter? Well, if I add heat to something, if I add heat to this one thing right here, I add a certain amount of, I add one joule of heat, the temperature will go up. Does the mass matter? Well, what if I had two of these and I added the same amount of heat? One joule. Would the temperature go up the same if I added the same amount of heat to two of these? It would go up half as much. So heat capacity of, of iClicker 
amount of heat divided by delta T, if I just have one of them, so I put in one joule and I get a temperature change of one, say, then I get this number for my heat capacity. If I have two of them, I have to add twice as much heat to get the same temperature change. So the heat capacity of two of them is twice as big, so is the mass of two of them twice as big. It certainly depends on the temperature, I mean on the mass. It depends on how much stuff you have. You can see that in a lot more careful way by taking a few more steps. What is Q? Again, we're going to stay away from bond energy changes. Heat capacity doesn't make any sense at a phase change. It doesn't make sense even to talk about it. What happens to delta T at a phase change? What is delta T when you're in the middle of a phase change? Zero. zero. Anytime you're in the middle of a phase change, Q over zero. Well, that's infinite. That's, you know, who cares? You're not going to worry about things that are infinite all of a sudden. They don't tell you anything useful. What they tell you is you're in the middle of a phase transition. But, but that's so. <laughs> Heat capacity we use when we're not in the middle of phase transitions and we just want to add energy and find out how much the temperature changes. <laughs> When you're not changing bond energy, then all then the heat is just the change in the thermal energy minus W, amount of work that you transfer in. Often, W, often it's zero. Often you're not doing any work. If you're not doing any work, but you're just transferring heat into something, like I put my hand around this thing, I'm not really doing any work on this, but my hand is hotter than this eye clicker is, so I'm transferring heat into the eye clicker. So often heat is the only, the, the work is zero, and heat is the only energy transfer, so that energy transfer is in fact the change in E thermal. There's all these provisos on this. <laughs> Number one, we're talking only about internal energies. Number two, no bond energy changes. And number three, no work done. So in all of, if, if all of those are true, then the heat capacity is just the change in E thermal divided by the change in temperature. You've changed the temperature, so you've changed E thermal. The ratio of those two tells you the heat capacity <coughs> And you know about E thermal. E thermal depends, now you know about E thermal. Equipartition tells you about E thermal. It tells you that every mode gets the same energy. Equal partitioning of energy. Every mode gets the same energy, one half kBT. Higher temperature, more energy for every mode. If every mode has the same energy, then to find the thermal energy, I just have to multiply the energy for every mode times the total number of modes that I have. How do I find the total number of modes? Well, I need to count them all. I need to know how many molecules I'm talking about. And I need to know how many modes every molecule has. So if I have modes per molecule times number of molecules, the product of that gives me the total number of modes. So, does it depend on the mass? Where's mass in here? Is mass in modes per molecule? Is it in number of molecules? Somehow that's where it is, because every molecule has a mass. If I double the number of molecules, I double the mass. If I have two eye clickers, I have twice as many eye clicker molecules. Whatever molecule that is. The eye clicker molecule, there's twice as many of them. The number of modes per molecule didn't change. But the number of molecules changed if I have two eye clickers, I have twice as many eye clicker molecules. And so I end up with twice the thermal energy. Or if I'm looking at changes in thermal energy, heat capacity is delta E thermal divided by delta T. Well, delta E thermal depends on delta T. This is straight out of that. If I want to change E thermal, I can do it by changing T. <coughs> and so the heat capacity just divides by this T. So the heat capacity is just all this other stuff. N, which is the number of molecules, times the number of modes per molecule, times half of Boltzmann's constant. That's what you expect the heat capacity to be. 
as long as equipartition is true. If you know how many modes and every mode gets the same amount of energy, then you know the thermal energy. 